just rings. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, God rains. Hallelujah, He rains, He rains. Hallelujah, He rains, He rains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the Lord that he led us you are the Lord I hear yes, you sent your word you sent your word I hear my disease you are In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. That is why it is very important for us to have our place. Sometimes we cannot move as we want to, or the Lord is directing us, because of one of time. I would like you to go ahead and just give God thanks. Just thank Him for your life. Thank him for your life. Thank him. Because we don't have time. Just thank him. Thank him for general. The Lord has kept you. Hey. Hey, without you, how can you be? If it's not in your life, what could you have done? You have even tried the thought of taking your life. But God has been there. Just give him thanks. Give him thanks. Bless him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. No matter how tired you are, just give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you that I'm still alive today, not because of my righteousness, not because of my prayer warrior of whatever. But it's all about you. You are the center of it all. And I can see this day, Lord, is because of you. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Take all the glory. Thank you for your church. In Jesus' name we are prayed. We have entered the what they called or some people called Ember Moon, which is coming from the word remember. And this is the ninth month. Isaiah chapter 66, 7 and 8 says that when the Zion travels, on that ninth month, he will bring forth a child. And the same with a pregnant woman, when he gives in, there will be challenges, there will be stress, there will be pains. But on the ninth month, when the woman give birth, there will be a great joy. The pains are gone. The challenges are gone. You're going to call upon God. I say, Father, this ninth month, end my challenge. End the issues in my life. Remember me and give me a fresh start. Remember me and give me a, big, a, big, a new beginning. Go ahead and begin to pray. Whatever that has been the trouble, the things that are taking away your joy, tell the Lord you have come to the ninth moon by His grace. Let God remember us. Let God remember us that there will be no pains. We will not carry along this pain this month. 
will not carry over that which we have been asking of the Lord. The answers will come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Lord, please give me a fresh start, a new beginning. Let everything that has been an affliction challenge issues in my life. In your church, in the life of your children, oh God. Bring it to an end now. And give us a new beginning, a fresh start. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Our time is not without. Father, we want to say thank you. We give you the glory and honor for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. Father, be, as we end today, Lord, because you have promised us that in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forever, may we receive joy overflow Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. and may we draw nearer to you. Amen. Have your way, O God. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayers. Well, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. We don't have to rush because of time. But tell your neighbor, the Lord will remember you this month. This is the month that the helping hand of God will come upon each and every one of us. The helping hand of God because of the ninth month. A month of new beginning, a month of fresh start, a month of divine judgment to all our enemies in the name of Jesus. Quickly, we just have about 20 minutes to go. We'll see how we go about today's message. And I welcome each and every one of us to the new month of September. May God bless us. May God protect us. May the countenance of the Lord His face shine upon us. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll be looking at, you know, today is the first day. In the month of September. So which means September begins today. And I want us to look at. As we are looking at. Or thinking. Oh today is the beginning of September. By the grace of God. I would like us to look at the beginning of all things. Now why I was struggling you know with little things that i do and i say god i was just lying and very tired i say god what is the word for this sunday i have never been over i've been but i was so overwhelmed that the answer came immediately as i just said god i'm not going to job preach what is the word and he said what is to what is going to be on sunday i said the beginning of september Say the word is in the beginning. And I begin to look at it. The message started coming. In the beginning. But before we go to, the, to read the Bible, there's something that I want to advise us. It's not really out of place. But it will help us to get a personal conviction. And what is that? I think I've come to find out that there are many of us that because we have been in the church, we've been in a crusade, we've been hearing messages online, and then we begin used to a particular word of God in the Bible. And then because of that, it begins to sink into our head. And then what do we do? We just begin to speak. And quote that Bible without even having ever visited or read it in the Bible. If I ask some of us now, we we'll find out that there are so many words we fought off head, but we never come across it or read it in the Bible. 
Not because we have been used to that word, it has been coming out from the pulpit, we've been hearing it. But how much do you think? That when you sit down and you hear the Bible say, and God will supply all my need. And you go to the Bible in Philippians and you're reading the context. And why did God say that? The conviction is sinking on you. That when you come out to begin to pray, you quote the Bible, you speak out of authority and conviction that you have read it and it is written. Don't you think? That is why when God is telling you, read your, the Bible says, read your Bible. Read your Bible. And God said this, brethren, I have never been overjoyed when I am going through the Bible and I came across something that I know, but I have not found it to be written. And I begin to read it. I begin to feel joy. I begin to feel conviction. I begin to feel like someone who is, I begin to cry and say, God, this is here and it is written. How many things can you say you have come across written in the Bible because you set a time, because you leave everything behind and say, let me communicate with my father. Even only these five minutes that I have, it's not everything you're occupied and busy with. You can spend that five minutes. Oh, this is my holiday time. Instead of busy from money, you say these five minutes, let me just go somewhere. No TV, no telephone, no Facebooking, no Instagramming, no Snapchat. I'm chatting, but let it be. I read my Bible for five minutes and see where it is written. Can you discipline yourself? They can say, everything off, and it is now with my Father that is in heaven. Try that and see what is going to happen in your life this morning. I'm not saying take the whole day. Just one five minutes. Put that phone aside. Because the world is moving fast. Put everything aside. When the call is coming, let it be. Let it be. Just that five minutes. Take up your Bible. Or just say, I want to hear from you, oh God. No TV, no distraction. I want to hear from you. God is real. God is real. Let us not play things out of life. The life is moving. Like I said, you know, I started teaching a series in one accord, which I've done about four parts. I'm still going to be that. In this today Thanksgiving, I want us to hear briefly. Wherever we stop, we stop. But I want you to look into your life. I want you to look into your life. We're going to go into the beginning. You know, when we are talking about the Bible, there's a book in the Bible that we should at all times, no matter however, we begin with it as we read the Bible. And that book is called Genesis. Let us look at, we're just going to deal with the chapter and one verse. That's a whole lot of parts if we're going to deal with this. But let us look at it as God help us. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. September 1, 2024. We are dealing with Genesis 1. September, beginning today. The world itself, and me and you, we are going to hear how it all started. The Bible says, my text or the theme is just in the beginning, comma, God. I stop it there. In the beginning, God. So what are we looking at? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 in the Bible. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Brother, let me say this again. Genesis means the origin. It means the beginning. Which means that 
if you understand. Which means that if you can believe Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, you won't have any problem with the rest of the Bible. If you can believe, this is where the confusion in the world comes in by so-called learned scientists, people, because they cannot understand how can a, a sect of people begin to believe what is written in Genesis chapter 1. And the further they go, the further they go, they get confused because you cannot comprehend the things of God by your own intelligence and this little head we have. The more they want to find out, the further they get lost, that they can't understand and they begin to make some kind of things for everyone to know it. If only you and me, because this is where the Bible starts. This is how everything we believe in today began. Praise the Lord. If we believe it, we won't have any problem believing the rest of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 is going to tell us briefly how the world came to be. Where we came from and where we are here. How the world. So that when you are doing or in any season you find you have to get back to remember what have this world spoken about you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like I said I will be rushing. The first thing the Bible began here in Genesis which is the origin he started talking about the beginning. This context, the beginning here speaks about a time. In the beginning here means a time. God. And he's trying to let us know that even at that time, there has been God. That's why the message is, in the beginning, God. A time, God. So God has been in existence before that time that something began. And what again is Genesis telling us? That in that beginning, there was someone who really began that beginning. Are we following that in that beginning, and that's why he said, in the beginning, God created. So he's telling us that there is someone who really began the beginning. And that someone was God. So God was at the center of it all. So he's telling us that in the beginning, there was God. And that God who had no beginning. That's what he's trying to tell us. In that time that things began, there was a God. There is a God. And that God cannot be traced to have a beginning. Let us see Psalm 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from, can you trace everlasting? He said, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth where you live. Can you think, brethren, there was a time there is no of us. We never existed. Have you think about yourself? There was a time there is nothing like us. I want you to explore this, to think about this God. <laughs> and that is why, I don't know how, many, how time we go today. You see, 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. What is he telling us? The heavens, the earth, we are created by God. There's something I will drive from here. I was just making research. What is to create? In that time, in the beginning, God, another word, I've explained in the beginning, I've said, I tried to talk about little about God. You say, God created. To create something, brethren, is to make something out of nothing. That is to create. When you say God created, you're talking about God making things out of nothing in existence. There is nothing existing and God created something out of no existence. That is to create. Making something out of nothing. That is why today you call the God... The creator and the maker. And what is the difference between a maker and a creator? A maker makes things out of something that is already existing. And God, the creator, makes out of nothing. That is why you see that today, every product, most of that is written, made in, made by. Because they made that thing out of something that has been existing somewhere. But the idea came in to use those things to make it. But God, nothing, which the Bible will tell us, in existence, he said, let. And they begin to, he didn't use any material. Whatever he used to, be, to make things is what he has already created. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us see Colossians chapter 1, 16 to 17. He said, for by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. By him we are all things created whether they be in heaven is by the Lord. Whether thou earth, how powerful that someone who can create things still becomes your father. He is your father. In heavens, whether they be visible, whether they be invisible, whether they be thrones, time for me, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things we are created by him and for him. And he is before. That goes back to Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> and he is before all things. And by him, you, we are in him. Hey, how can we get this understanding? You know, let me digress because of time. But before I say, let's see Job again. Job chapter 36, verse 26. Behold, God is great, and you and me know him not. Do you hear what? Colossians said, and in Job he's saying, God is great, and you and me know him not. Neither can number of his years be searched out. He is ageless. God is neither young nor old. You see, I was listening uh, there when the Sunday school was going on. And we are talking about crisis. Thank you, Father. You know, 
Everything in life is what you call it to be. Things become a crisis when you minus Christ out of faith. That's why the Bible says, God is great and we know him not. If God can make thrones and you have an issue, nobody is saying, listen very carefully, that because you're a Christian, there won't be any challenge in your life. There will be issues in your life. But if you begin to see that problem as a crisis, that means you have removed Christ out of it. That's why the two words, without Christ, there is crisis. Nobody said there won't be challenges. And that is why they God is great. Brethren, can I just go further because of time? Let us look at the beginning. There are points I want to raise here, but I will not finish. Number one thing to know, I just jumped over now. God is great. And we know it not. Number one lesson to learn here. There is always a beginning of everything in life. There is always a beginning of everything in life. The beginning tells you that everything you see around you, we are not in existence at some point until they we are started. Call it any name. Seek whatever in your life was not existing in your life before. It started somewhere, sometime. And that makes that the beginning. Listen. Everything. There's always a beginning for everything in life. The earth, the life, the moon star, whatever it is, they all started up but one day. It also means that at a point, there is a thing in your life that was not there, but started one day. And there are things in your life that are not yet there. That great dream you have, if Jesus tarries, is going to start one day in manifestation. So, brethren, if you remember this word today, that before that whatever you call crisis, that you said, I am finished, there was a time that problem started. But before the problem started, the beginning and the end was looking at it and it started. Therefore, he has the power to stop it. Whatever it is, anything that has a beginning, brethren, beginning means a journey. And the second thing I want to say, the end means a destination. So whatever has a beginning must have an end. Only God that does not have a beginning. I don't have much time. But I have lessons to give us here and things to say. But I want you to look into your life. Whether you remember it, whether you don't remember it, whatever you're going through this day, there was a day. It has finished in the spiritual, but there's a day it came to you. And that is the day you marked that this problem started in my life. And if it has a beginning and there is someone called great, and his name is God that does not have a beginning, which means God just permitted it for a purpose. And if the Bible says all things work together for good, that means if you are serving God and something is happening in your life, it's not a crisis. It is for the name of God to be glorified. But your attitude matters when it happens. doesn't matter how it looks like. It might take a toll out of you. You might weep. You might have pains. The patriarch had the same. Go and check Abraham. Go and check David. Go and check Job. Like I said, we don't have time, but I'm going to still teach on this. 
Brethren, everything in life has a beginning. So whatever you're going through has a beginning. Has a beginning. Don't give up. It doesn't matter what people say. They say God that does not have a beginning. And he's more than able. He's more than able. It's more than ever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know why I was talking about time, but let's leave this finally. At any time I come here, do whatever I plan to do, I allow the Holy Spirit. When I started, you know, I can see the move and it just let me go. You know, people will say, why are you not finishing this? It's, I didn't call myself. And I cannot, this. if I come in here and I can see the Lord is touching and he want me, that's how it works. I plan a song here, I plan things here, but when I say Holy Spirit take over, who am I? But I want to assure you that what God has done here today in your life. That's why I say whether it be visit, there are things you might not see. All what it requires is to believe and have faith in God. But we'll continue this message sometime. So that will tell you the points to learn from only Genesis chapter 1. And how you have to comport yourself and cheer yourself up. The world we are living started by God himself. The universe is created visible, invisible by God. So who can ask God, what are you doing? Who can counsel him? Who is that person that God is going to give account to? When God starts working in your life, does he need permission of your enemies? Who is he? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to rise up on our feet because of time. I want us to rise up. We'll continue the message. I want you not to miss the church. To continue the message. But I want you to look into your life. Everything happening in your life has a beginning. Only key to God. Continue why people are saying, come to church, cry to him. In your closet, the little you can, just cry to God. And live a life that will glorify him. As you can, much in you. Don't look at anyone. Don't look at people that are more righteous than everyone. It's good to be righteous and holy. But if you have the desire to live for God, just continue that walk with Him. No matter how. Walk with the Lord. Just go ahead and thank Him. We're in September. Don't give up. Everything in your life has a beginning. There's a time it started. There's a time, whether you know it, whether you can't understand why, whether you thought it's your decision or your mistake that made that to start, there is a God who can change mistakes. There's a God who can go back to 20 years because it's ageless and seasonless and timeless. God who can go to 20 years back and change things. There's a God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father, for touching us today. Thank you for showing us love. Thank you for hearing our cries. Thank you for spreading your arms and asking us to come as we are. Take all the glory and give us rest. And draw us closer to you. Let this month be a month that new things begin to happen in our lives. To the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Sorry for rushing for time. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Go in peace. It shall be well with us. In Jesus' name. Please let's help to pack things. God bless you all.